Hi guys, welcome to today's class. We're going to go over some uh, sort of alternate uh, shirt drafting methods. We're going to focus on shirring. Um, and what else do we need to do? Grab some cuffs for the sleeve. We haven't done cuffs. They're pretty easy though. They're kind of like the waistband of the sleeve. Um, so we're going to go over... Come on now. Let me do it. Alright, Liz, I got that open. Now let me show you the example that I'm going to work off of today as well. So this is the shirt that we're going to draft. Now, as you can see, um, it has a little shirred neckline. Now, uh, shirts of this style are usually done in knit, and indeed, this shirt is no example. It's a nice little sort of uh, raspberry uh, uh, jersey fabric. Um, but we can make it in uh, woven as well if there's, there's no problem for it. Um, you'll notice that there's no darts or seams. So typically, when we use shirring, we are going to um, not have darts or seams, and instead we have the shirring fabric. So the shirring fabric creates a situation where it, there's a full area reduced down to a smaller area, so it creates the sort of shape and contour that we need that otherwise a dart or seam would create. So what we have is we have a nice little v-neck with shirring right in here at the center, and we're going to go ahead and draft that, and I'm going to do it as if it were this shirt right here. Um, so let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to get rid of my skirt pieces because we're not going to be using them today. And let's focus in on my front piece because all that shirring is located really in my front. Now the main difference between, actually, you know what? I'm going to put those shirt pieces back there because this shirt, since we're making this shirt, is much longer than our waistline. As you can see, it goes all the way down to, where does it go down to? The full hip? Yeah, it goes all the way down to the full hip, so it's rather long. Um, and our shirt sloper only goes to the waist. So we need to make this a bit longer. So we're going to keep that in consideration. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the shirring part first on the front, okay? So what I want to do is our fullness that we have is located in this dart, okay? So what I'm going to do is pretty much I'm going to first rotate that dart up here into the neckline where the shirring is. So I'm going to use the cut tool. I'm going to do our dart rotation method by cutting out the dart, getting rid of this negative space, cutting where I want the sort of center of the shirring to go. So let's do it like maybe right here. Okay. And I'm going to join the dart here and that's going to open up our initial area. Okay, let's get rid of that original dart so we have a nice clean piece. There we go. 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and curve this too, even though, actually, no, I'm going to leave that because we're going to go ahead and um, make it a little bit longer of a shirt anyway. Okay, so now what we have is we have increased this fullness up here by, let's measure it, about 3.19 inches. Now, if the original area we were working with was about three inches, that would be perfect. And about it is, that's quite a bit of space for us to go down. Remember that the general formula to get nice shirring is to increase the space where you're putting the shirring by, a, by uh, about uh, 100%. So I'm going to double up um, any area that I want shirring. Again, if you're working with really limp, thin fabrics, you want to do a little bit more. If you're working with very thick fabrics, you want to do a little bit less. Um, but I'm going to go right down the middle, and let's say that this is going to be enough. Now, if it's not enough, you can cut and spread even more area. But just for this small amount of shirring in our shirt, as you can see, there's it's not a ton of it. It's just this little area right here. This is going to be more than enough. Now, I don't want any less than this because, of course, we need at least this amount of fullness to create the shape uh, that uh, uh, we need. If any less might make it a bit too small and, and not create the fullness that we want in this area of the bust. So we've got to be careful with that. So what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to find out pretty much where I want it. And let's say it's like about here to here. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, redraft this. Oh, i got to protect it first, though, of course. Oh, my gosh, I'm sorry. I should have cut the neckline first. Let me do that. I'm so sorry. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put that little bit of a v-neck in. Sorry about that, guys. Always do your neckline first if you're <laughs> going to be altering the neckline. <laughs> so, just forgot about that. So I'm just making that little bit of a v-neck that we have here. It's not too deep. It's not too, too much of anything. And then, of course, I'm just going to do the same thing again. About right in the middle of where that shirring is going to be join together our pieces, so on and so forth. So everything I just did before, I just needed to uh, cut my neckline to create that little bit of a subtle v-neck. There we are. Again, sorry about that. But we all, we all make mistakes. We all forget what's supposed to go where and when. All right, okay. So now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to protect it and I'm going to redraft it. one. Obviously don't want to remove the protection. And I'm going to copy just about everything we have. digitizing. Okay, now I'm going to bring this out for just a second. I don't want to get rid of my front sloper yet, okay, because I need to do a couple other things. I'm going to take the protection off when I can. What I'm going to do is I'm going to place notches on here where I want the shirring to start and to finish, okay? So I'm just going to put one here because, um, we're, we actually have the other side, so it goes on the other side. So it's not actually going to stop here. So if you see, it goes from about you know mid neckline here to mid neckline on the other side. So it's not going to actually stop at our center front here. But we can still put one in just for sort of measurement's sake. So of course, you know, this will just be a notch here. So we'll sure here and then sure here, which actually might be a good idea to do with a, a V-neck, anyways. Okay, what I'm going to do is now I'm going to copy that onto my um, drafted piece. 
Okay? And we'll have one more step too. Let me just protect this, just make sure I can easily get the notches on my new piece and not my old piece. And I can zoom in to the neckline so I can see right where I made those notches and just place those notches on my new piece. Okay, there we go. Now, the last thing I need to do is to indicate how much it needs to be shirred by. So I'm going to take this off. Come on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom back into this front neck. Now, this is my original pattern, and I see that from Move the protection so I can take a nice measurement. From here to here, okay, one and one four, and I'm going to just make a note of that. And let's measure this guy too. One point two. So we add those together and we get 2.61, okay? Now, what does that measurement tell me? That tells me how much that area I have indicated to have the shirring be applied to, how much it needs to be shirred down, okay? So let's zoom in there. Okay, so from here to here, Okay, now we can kind of, if you want to, especially since it's shirring, we can kind of move this down to sort of even it out a little bit so we don't have little jaggly, you want to avoid those little jaggly lines when you're doing shirring, it'll help apply the shirring better. Okay, so in this instance, okay, let, and let's see how much, so if I want it to be shirred down to 2.61 inches, I should be looking at, you know, a little between five, this should be between five and six inches. Fantastic. Um, okay. So in my text box, I'm going to indicate shirring between notches. Final length 2.61 inches. So that lets anybody know that, okay, I'm going to apply shirring between these notches and it's going to be shirred down to 2.61 notches. And of course we don't want it any more than that or any less than that because uh, otherwise it'll be too big or too small. So we say, okay. in just a little bit. Fantastic. So now I know exactly what to do when I sew this together. Let's zoom out. And that's all we really need to do. So remember when we did it on the skirt, it was always, um, if we had a corresponding piece, the notches were a little bit smaller, so we knew how to shrink the notches down with the shirring to match the notches. However, in this instance, we don't have another piece on the neckline to match it up to, so uh, we have to indicate the length that it is going to be um, going down to. Now, let's take a look at how we can lengthen this shirt. Now, if this was a woven, I'm gonna have to loosen it a little bit because what we're going to do, this shirt that we're basing it off of is knit, okay? So, I don't know if I should just assume this is knit um, and draft it as so, um, or assume that it was woven. It's very similar. Um, uh, especially this is a fairly loose fitting shirt anyways, so you could probably make it uh, with um, woven and draft, or I'm sorry, draft it with woven in, in pretty much the same way since it is fairly loose. Okay, so we're going to make it fairly loose. We're not going to make it super fitted. So how do we do that? And again, this, this could draft could probably be uh, used for either a knit or a woven. Let's zoom out. 
what I need to do is I need to basically take my front skirt and attach it and utilize it here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close the darts because we don't have any darts. Close both darts. And I'm going to cut it off at the length that I need it to be. So it went to the full hip, so I'm going to cut along the full hip, just like so. Okay. Now let's separate it. And what I want to do is I want to align the center fronts and be sure not to overlap any part of the pattern pieces. So this is touching up here, and uh, but not overlapping, okay? Now I'm going to use both these pieces as a sort of template to redraft my piece. Now you see that there's a big space here. That's fine. That's going to help us create a less fitted version. Now if I needed this to be quite fitted, I would need to include the darts, include the uh, uh, a seam or something like that, and I would do it in a different um, style. Um, I'll actually, I'll, maybe I'll show you how to do that afterwards, to do a fitted version, maybe with seams. Seams is the best way. i got to fix this grain line before it drives me insane. Okay, even though I'm not going to use this piece as the final version. I'm going to protect both pieces. And let's go ahead and redraft. Oh, so I have the whole piece. There we go. And do basically redraft what I've already drafted. Nope, I don't want to remove it. So I am going to have to add in these instructions and notches again, actually. So I probably should have waited to do that. Go all the way straight down. I'm going to go out here. And again, so this is fairly fitted. So again, we're go I'm actually going to go slightly further out. Again, we're making it a little bit looser, a little bit loosely fitted. So as you can see, what I'm, uh, I'm achieving that by not going too tight in. I'm leaving looseness in the hip and in the waist area, and then matching it back up here at the armpit. And there we go. Yes, I do want to finish. There's my piece. I'm going to go ahead and, um, sorry, I got to look the cat out. Okay, and uh, I got to put in those notches again and, the, and, and whatever else, but that's easy to do. Fix my grain again. And just looking at this, I think I want to push out the um, hip a little bit, just to give it a little bit more of a hippy curve shape. I don't want that dark piece. I should have gotten rid of that. And we'll put this back in there. So what I can do is I can just copy, hopefully. Why am I copying the piece or am I copying the text box? Whatever. So again. Okay. 
Of course, we say front shirt, blah, 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 blah. And what we do, of course, we sure that up. And um, we don't have a facing for this. We have kind of like a, a binding here um, that would be applied onto like almost like a bias binding or uh, uh, something like that applied onto our uh, neckline there. And we just shirt up, so everything else, and so on and so forth. The only thing we got to do for the back is, get, of course, eliminate the darts and do the same thing down here. Um, so that's pretty much how you would apply shirring. Let's look at a slightly different version of it. So um, a lot of times shirts will have shirring coming from like a yoke seam instead. So let's do that. So first we have to go ahead and create our yoke. So remember what we do, we um, join our shoulder seams, but we only align them. We don't actually put them together. So, but we use the join piece to, oh, let me close this shoulder dart first. We don't need you. So again, because I use the move uh, pieces alongside only, they are still two separate pieces, how I want them to be, and they're not uh, connected. And what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna, this sloper has this kind of, this little tiny curve that kind of bothers me. It should be, I get a bit smoother because you don't want a pointy pointy line, pointy shape at your shoulder seam. There we go, that's better. Okay, let's zoom out. And we're gonna put in our uh, yoke seams. And let's assume that there is shirring in front and back. Come on, come on. There you go. So let's grab my cut, and I'm just going to do a very simple seam, so I'm not a uh, yoke seam. So again, we're going to pass the back through that shoulder point. I'm going to put shirring on the back here as well as the front. And let's do very simple on the front, straight across from neck to armhole. Okay, we'll attach these two pieces. Oops with our join piece tool. And this is going to be our yoke piece. Fantastic. Again, our yoke uh, always has uh, on fold on the center back. So we're gonna line our grain. Again, that'll be always true, except if you wanna do sort of a diagonal uh, uh, bias or a bias cut uh, yoke, then of course your grain will be on the diagonal. All right, so now let's grab our front. And what I want to do is I want to add shirring that comes from the yoke seam. So this little seam is going to have shirring in it um, right in here. And the first thing I want to do, and let's not forget because it's harder to do afterwards, is indicate where my shirring is. Okay, so what I want to do is I'm going to line up these two seams. I'm going to leave a little space just so the marking is a little bit easier to make. And I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to put notches here on my sloper that say, okay, I want shirring to be, oh, let's say between here and here. Now, the shirring itself is not going to go on the yoke, but the shirring little gathers are going to go on this piece, but when it's seamed together, they'll start here and end here. And again, once it, you'll see once it's finished, it'll let me know how much to shirr it in. Okay, so there we are. Now let's zoom out and um, grab my front sloper and apply all the shirring up in there. Now I can probably, like before, get all the shirring I need um, uh, out of just a dart rotation using that space of the dart. Um, let me rotate this back around so it looks a little bit more normal. Spin it around here. over 
here. Let's see what we're working on. Zoom out a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate um, my dart up in here. So I know the shrink is going to become uh, in between here and here. Um, I should have put the notches on this piece as well. I don't know what's wrong with my head today. But let me just rotate this guy around so we can do that. So here's the seam. Let's just rotate it a little bit better. That's pretty good. And let's zoom in so we can see what we're doing. Okay, so I'm basically putting these notches directly across to correspond here. So I know where the notches are going to go or where the shirring is going to be applied on the actual piece as well. So again, what's going to happen is when we apply this, these are going to go farther apart. And then when we do the shirring, they'll get shirt, uh, uh, shirt down closer together till they uh, match up with these guys right here. Okay, fantastic. So um, I also want to know where the middle of my shirring is going to be. So I'm just going to place a notch that, or not a notch, but a point that is in the middle of these two notches. So I'll use my proportionate value here just to do that. There we go. That's my little point. All right, let's zoom out again. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to rotate the dart and essentially do it so my new dart is going to be coming from that point. So we cut out the existing dart. Say bye bye. Bye bye. And we cut from the dart tip up to that point and join the legs of the original dart to close the original dart and open the new dart. There we go. Let's clean it up. this if we want to. Since we're not going to extend it, we can start finalizing it. Oh, let's put a little stray line in. Let's get rid of a stray line. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to roughly measure to see if we spread it open enough. So my distance, my final distance is 3.65. So remember, I'm looking for roughly double that. So roughly double 3.65 is um, going to be uh, 8.3, I guess. Or no, it's like 7.2, 3, 7.2, okay. roughly that. So between 7 and 8 inches I'm looking for. So just roughly, it's going to be a little bit more than this because this is a straight line measurement. Mm, looks okay. So remember, it's going to be a little bit more, a little bit more than that. That should be, it should be just fine. Now, if I needed more, so let's say, okay, Kate, well, you say that's enough, but what if it's really not enough? What if, or what if I'm working with such a thin fabric that I want more? Okay, well, that's what we're going to do now. Let's say I really want a lot of shirring, really poofy shirring or it's going to be a very thin fabric so I want to really make sure. So if we need a little bit more what I'm going to do is I'm going to now cut this open again where that dart was and what we're going to do is I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to rotate it out slightly and that's going to give me a much bigger area for shirring. I'm going to place that back because I want to maintain the length of my waistline. Now let's measure that. That might be too much. A little bit too much shirring. 
I think that should be okay, especially if you are working with a thinner fabric. Um, if you're working with a thicker fabric, that would be too much. Um, but let's say we're not. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to protect this whole piece, or both pieces, I should say, and redraft. Nope. Straight across there, and our neckline, and we're done. This piece. Now, before I move it off, I want to make sure that I have copied the darts onto the, or not the darts, but the notches onto the new piece. So let's zoom in and do that. So we got a notch here, and a notch here. And again, likewise, what I kind of want to do is just, I'm going to just sort of move this down a little bit to sort of straighten it out. Just a little bit to smooth it out. Now let's move this up here. Now you can see that I have my string here, and I might want to indicate that if I was being, you know, um, overly cautious with everything, I'd still indicate string between notches match with notches on yoke. There we go. So I know exactly what to do. I know to apply shirring in between these notches and I know to squish them down so uh, these notches will uh, resultingly end up this distance apart. So they'll match up when I actually sew the, the seam together. Okay, let's do the back. I am going to get rid of these guys here for this, just so I'm you know, working a little bit cleaner. And now I have also finished this piece. We'll do all of our finishing and labeling later. Always remember to do your finishing and labeling. So that goes there, and let's check out the back here. Now I'm going to use the same yoke piece, of course, as a guide. So let's grab this guy and rotate him around so he matches up with my back piece a little bit better. And we'll zoom in so we can see what we're doing. Okay, so I'm going to bring him down just a bit more, and let's decide where we want the shirring on the back. Let's say I want it just sort of in the middle here, or maybe we want it in isolated pieces, like one here, one little tuft here, one little tuft over here. I don't know. What do you guys think? In the middle? Great. So I'm going to do just one notch again because this is both these are going to be um, on fold. So this is one notch is going to apply the notch to the other side as well. So I'm going to have here, but as you can see, it'll also be over here um, once we you know cut it out on the fold. Okay. So what I need to do is I need to put my corresponding notch right down here. There we go. Now what I want to do is um, I want to basically do the same thing where I put this dart in here. Um, but that's not even going to be enough because this is a very small dart. Um, we need, we're going to need to spread it open a bit more. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of dart rotation to do that. So what I want is I'm going to, this is way a little bit too high right now. So I'm going to lower this dart um, a little bit just so the dart rotation process is a little bit easier. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out the dart. So it's pretty much the same thing. Actually, you know what, there's an easier way to do this. Um, let's just close the dart. 
since we're going to have to spread it open anyways, um, you don't really need to do this. It kind of just makes it more complicated and is unnecessary. I don't like things that are complicated and unnecessary. So let's just get rid of the dart. Okay. So um, we got rid of the dart. So like I said, we're going to need to spread this open. So I'm going to use slash and spread. Okay. Now I have the opportunity here and when I slash and spread to really change the fit of the garment. I'm going to, oh, let's do a couple slashes, uh, kind of evenly placed. Um, here. Now I'm putting all the way down to the hem. That's fine. Okay. I'm going to show you a, maybe a couple different ways to do this, it, how to isolate maybe the fullness if you want it to be isolated a little bit more. Um, the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to maintain the width of the waist. So it's still going to kind of flow back to being fitted at the waist, but still again, have a little bit of fullness uh, from the shirring here at uh, the center back. And again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure this length here, two inches. So again, I'm looking for a total distance of about four inches for this, okay? I'm going to now rotate with slash and spread the same way. We really have done again and again. And I'm gonna kind of rotate it out. And since I have, I'm looking for about an inch distance between the tops opening up to get the right amount of shirring. So let me measure that, see what it is. Okay, maybe a little bit more, a little, I'm all close to an inch, but it's still a little bit far away. Just a wee bit more, let's say. That's probably good. Let's measure it just in case. I wish you could nudge these pieces with the arrow keys like you can in Illustrator. That would be great. And I wish it didn't snap so much. And I wish I had a scroll wheel on this computer mouse so I could zoom easier. But what can you do? Okay, and let's do this guy. Rotate him out about the same. And again, with shirring, um, you always want to keep the spaces that you open up uh, even because you always want shirring to be even. You never kind of want, so you know how I was talking, you can like open it up uh, a little bit more in some spaces if you want like fuller drapes in, in some space as opposed to others. You don't really ever want that insuring. You always kind of want even insuring all the way out, around. So let's make sure that it's an even opening that's smaller. So let's make it a little bit bigger. Probably should have been paying attention to my degrees so I wouldn't have to do so much trial and error. Okay, that looks good. Let's double check. Close enough for me. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is, you guessed it, we're gonna go ahead and uh, protect and draft all pieces. Now what this will do is it'll uh, allow you to create the shirring in this area and the fullness is kinda, will obviously be most full up here at the top and then kind of as this gets smaller the fullness kind of blends out into the sort of normal fit of the shirt but you might be saying mm, you know Kate I uh oh, I made a little error there but that's okay we'll go back and fix it I don't want I want this sh the, almost like a bubble like I want to uh, a very small area of fullness. So let's correct this right here. There we go. 
And there's our piece. And again, we have our notch here. It's a little bit farther out, but we know to shorten it down to fit this here. Um, so I'm going to bring this out. Boop, boop. Now you might be saying, okay, that sounds great, but what about that thing you're saying about isolated fullness? How does that work? So what if I want to just sort of like a, almost like a bubble up here created by the shirring, but I don't want it to sort of gradually blend back into the fitted. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, well, first I got to unprotect these pieces. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut where essentially, oops, um, I want the fullness to end. So let's say I want it to end like right maybe just below the armpit, okay? So I'm going to cut across just like that. Let's cut all these pieces across. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this. This is spread the way I want it for the fullness. But the rest of these pieces I'm going to join back together. And yes, you're right. If I'm not doing this retroactively, I could have just cut across here and then slashed and spread these and left this by itself. Okay? So um, maybe this isn't the best way to show you since I'm doing it almost like retroactively after drafting another piece instead of initially wanting to do it this way. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up center back here. Got to rotate it a little bit just to do that. Be straight. Straight enough for me. And what I'm going to do now is align this guy up here. Again, this is we're going to assume that the center back's on fold, so I don't want to rotate this out. I want to keep the center back straight. But now let's kind of bring this back here, and we're going to rotate out from here. And I want to push this up. I don't want to overlap the pieces. So if I need a little bit of like space like this, that's what I'm going to do. Now it's kind of a small amount of shirring, so let's ro rotate it out a little bit more. And the more we rotate, the more you can see why we'll need to um, move this up a bit. And we'll do this guy too. Okay, we might need to increase that space. I'm just going to move this down and then align these guys first. Boop, boop, boop. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this, and again, not overlap, we're still going to have space here. And we're going to generally sort of go like this. Okay, so what I'm going to do, we want to keep this aligned here. Now, if there's a little extra space over here, and you can see that there is, that's okay. That's just going to go into our shirring space. But I'm just going to throw a guideline in there so we know how to make a nice straight center back. Yeah, okay, so now what I'm going to do is, just as before, protect everything and redraft the whole shape. Now, what this will do, the, the difference between this and the, the other way we did it is, is admittedly fairly subtle. Um, this is going to, again, isolate this fullness into the upper uh, part of the garment, again, above sort of this line that we cut here. Below this line is going to be completely fit. It's, in, it's going to change the, uh, the fullness and where it's applies more dramatically and quickly than in the original version. Uh, uh, again, this version, the, you know, basically from waist to armpit is going to be very fitted. 
where uh, we'll have a much sort of bubblier area up here. Um, uh, whereas the original one, the shoring fullness kind of very gradually just blended back into a normal waistline. By the time it hit the waistline, it was back to being fitted, but it's very gradual all the way down. There we are. Of course, we still transfer over the notch so we know where we're applying the shirring, but in the end, that is all we need to do. Okay, last thing I want to show you is, um, I guess I'm going to, I'm going to go, uh, forego doing a lot of the finishing. At this point, we've done so many patterns. You guys should know how to finish your patterns, even though um, I wasn't completely convinced judging by some of your uh, student drafted skirts, uh, but <laughs> uh, I'm not going to take the time to add all the seam allowances and add all the cutting information. That'll just probably bore you all to, to death anyways. But let's apply a cuff to a sleeve. Okay, so cuffs are really easy. All we need to do, in, in most cuffs, although you can shape them if you want, but most cuffs are pretty much just rectangles. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure this length that it needs to finish and we see okay great um uh that is uh 10 inches and 10.62 inches fantastic um now most shirts with cuffs um or, or most sleeves with cuffs will have some sort of tucking um or shirring or something that goes into the cuff so the cuff is sort of more narrow than the rest of the sleeve and you kind of get this sort of poofy blousy effect once the cuff ends. Um, let's do that. Let's put in a little bit of a tuck. Um, but I'm going to make note of this 10.62 inches, which is what my opening should be or my original sleeve opening is. But let's add a tuck or two. And we're gonna, I'm just gonna do, let's do two tucks. Typically on a nice sort of collared shirt, you'll see two tucks. And I'm doing this on the front and it should be done on the back. So let's let me get out of this. Oh, don't freeze, don't freeze. Uh-oh, uh-oh. It's being really slow. Let's hope it pulls out. Come on, come on, come on, come on, you can do it. You can do it, Optitex. You can do it. Please don't freeze. Okay. I don't have the wheel of death, so I'm hopeful we'll be able to get out. Sometimes it just kind of gives up for a second. So as, oh, there we go. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Okay, here we go. We're back in business. Okay, so I'm going to put them in back. It doesn't really matter where, but usually they are in back. If you want to put them front, you can put them in the front. It honestly doesn't matter. And you can put as many or a few as you want, or you can use shirring instead. So let's assume that these are tucks. What I'm going to do um, is I'm going to put in two tucks. Put the other one maybe right here. Cut it up through here. And I'm using slash and spread to do it. It's, it's, it's essentially the same method I'm doing as shirring. But instead of reducing the size back down with shirring, I'm going to use tucks. So even the notation with the notches and everything are going to be pretty similar. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. Please work. Please work. No, I don't want that tool. I want this tool. Oh, work. Work. Okay, 
I might have to cut this video short. Uh, long story short, once you have that cough, uh, that length measurement, you, you, you just use the piece, create rectangular piece option to make that length plus a little bit because you need a uh, an overlap because cuffs will always open and close. In addition, you need to create a little bit of an area on the sleeve for a, a sleeve vent. Oh, am I going to be able to do it? Just optics or is the whole thing? Oh, oh, okay. Yes, that is what I wanted to do about three minutes after I wanted to do it, but. Maybe if I zoom in, will it help? Will the zoom work? Mm hmm, okay, good. No, actually, I want this one. Rotate piece right up here, rotate on that point. Okay, okay, we're working, we're working. And, you know, I don't want a, a huge tuck. Just a, just a little bit. I mean, it really depends on how blousey you want that kind of, you know, look to be. How much you want that sleeve to be poofed out over the cuff. If you want it to be poofier, you make bigger tucks. If not, keep them small. And again, you don't need this. I just want to show you a fairly standard version of, of what you do see on a, uh, like a collared shirt sleeve. If you want to have cuffs without tucks or without that blousing effect, that's fine. That's no worries. A little bit more. So I'm just going to zoom and make sure that these are all lined up here because I don't want to make my armhole seam any bigger. You can see there's little gaps here, so let's just move them back into place. And I'm going to redraft this. Whole thing to create the final sleeve version. And I have one more bit of detail where the sleeve vent is. So um, while I'm doing this, I'll, so whenever we have a sleeve like this and the cuff is fairly small, we need to create a sleeve vent in addition to our cuff because without it, so what the sleeve vent does is it allows the cuff to kind of open up wider than just that original seam or that really tight seam. Um, which is necessary because, of course, cuffs really come and they fit pretty closely around our wrists. Um, so in order for us to be able to get our hands through, what we do is we utilize that sleeve cuff vent, again, to open up that, the cuff and that space a little bit wider, get our hands through, and then we close it up after we're finished. And if you want to know what that looks like, look at any cuff of a collared shirt and it will have it. I mean, there's some very few exceptions, but. Okay, let's finish. Before I take it out, let's notch where these tucks are gonna go. So notch here, notch here. Notch here and notch here. And I didn't create a piece because why? It wasn't protected. Why wasn't it? I forgot to protect it because I'm an idiot. Okay. 
Okay, let's try that again. back here, 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 and here. Hopefully it didn't snap any place weird. Let's zoom in. I probably should have zoomed in before I did that. Okay, it looks like it pretty much did. It didn't, not here for some reason. So there's our tucks. So let's do the sleeve cuff. Like I said, it's piece, new piece, create rectangular piece. We're going to put in the length that it was uh, supposed to be. So 10.62. Let's add, um, let's add, uh, let's say an inch of overlap. And however wide we want it. Uh, I don't know. Let's do inch and a half. Okay, there's our cuff. Let's bring it over here. Um, I also need to put in the shirt where the sleeve vent is going to be. Okay. So imagine this is a, 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 so where these parts are going to overlap. So this is obviously this seam is going to attach here to create a tube. Um, so we need to mark in our actual sleeve, which is now this piece. Let's get rid of this and this. Uh, what would have been good is to put my notches front and back and also my center notch before I did that, but oh yeah. So at least just fix the grain. Okay, so let's put in, um, and all I really need to do is just draft a small line on my sleeve where the sleeve vent is going to be. And it's just going to go straight up, so I just want to make sure it's going to go straight up. And it should be at least about three inches. It's five inches. Let's make it four inches. And I want it straight up, so no change in X. And right click, finish drafting. And that will let us know to cut this uh, to allow it to vent. Again, vent open. And that is where the overlap of our uh, cuff is going to occur. Um, and we'll finish it using uh, alternate uh, uh, little pieces. There are many different ways to finish our sleeve vent plackets. You can use bias tape, you can use other little pieces. Um, uh, many have di distinct little looks and things like that, but you can Google them and take a look. Uh, I'm going to end it there because this video is getting kind of a little bit long, so uh, we'll end it right there. Um, uh, let me just go over our finishing for the cuff because we haven't done a cuff piece before. Um, either direction of grain, either this way or this way, is fine for your cuff piece. It doesn't matter. Um, it might matter more if you have like a stripe or something, depending on how you want your stripes to go. Um, you're going to have seam allowance all the way around. It's a cuff, so a lot of times we'll have a slightly smaller seam allowance, just like the collar. We'll definitely miter our corners. And um, for this guy, we get two layers for each sleeve. So uh, we put our style number, which is whatever it is, our size, which is whatever it is. But it's going to be cut uh, for self. Again, two for each side. And then cut for interfacing. So the same rules apply if you want a very stiff um, uh, shaped cuff. Uh, do a cut for interfacing if you want it to be a little bit softer or whatever. Uh, you can just use one layer of inter 
facing for a cop, so you can do cut two inch facing. Either are fine, just depends on what you want. All right, there it is. And then, of course, don't name it peace. Yuck. Name it cuff. There we are. Um, and that's it. So that's all for today. Um, we'll come back next week.